Hey, this is Mike McAdam from Gen X Guitar. Can you guess who is Eddie Van Halen's secret guitar hero? Let's talk about it. So if you've gone deep down the Eddie Van Halen rabbit hole, you have probably heard about a guitarist that was, I guess, a couple of years older than Ed in the Pasadena area named Terry Kilgore. Now, I remember hearing about this guy, but I never really heard anything. I know he played for David Lee Roth in the 90s, but the interesting thing is if you look at videos or performances he did from that point, his playing had changed a lot. I think he was in his 40s at that point, and his playing had calmed down a little bit. But just in the last couple of years, I heard a couple of recordings from this guy in the late 70s, and wow, there are definitely some similarities to him and Eddie. Um, to add to the story, if you listen to people like George Lynch and Chris Holmes who were around in that era, they say, yeah, Eddie was definitely influenced by Terry Kilgore. I guess he was the hot player at that point in that area. There's also a story about Terry taking lessons with Harvey Mandel and getting the tapping idea. Terry Kilgore showed it to Eddie Van Halen and Eddie started doing it. Now, there are some reports that Eddie took lessons with Terry Kilgore. I can't see Ed being the kind of guy, okay, Ed, be at your lesson at 3 p.m. on Thursday. Okay. Um, I think maybe him and Terry might have jammed a couple times or exchanged some ideas. The thing that makes Terry Kilgore interesting is there's very little information about him out there. There are some random clips on YouTube of him at Nam or playing with Roth, but just very little information, which makes him kind of a man of mystery here. However, we're going to listen to this recording from a band he was in called Ready Kilowatt. This is a song called Liquid Lady. And this song, to me, has some definite Van Halen crossover. I guess this came out in 1979, but let's take a listen to it. This is the first solo. Check this out on YouTube if you haven't heard the whole song. Very Eddie. So this is one of those songs where it's, it's basically built around the guitar solo, as it should be. So the thing that's interesting about this is there aren't licks per se that Eddie played. Some of them have the same type of style. Um, one of the things I think of, if you check this out, I'm going to pin this in the video. There's a live version of DOA on... It's a bootleg from the Pasadena Civic Center in December of 1977 soundboard recording. If you haven't heard this before, it's mind-blowing. It's right before Van Halen's first album came out. And the live version of DOA is a little extended. And some of the licks Eddie's playing in that really remind me of some of what you're hearing here. They're in the same key, and that probably has something to do with it. But here, it's not the licks, but some of the vibe is definitely similar to Van Halen and the attack that he plays the guitar with um, definitely has some crossover with Ed. Um, if I just heard this, what's interesting is it sounds like he's playing a Stratocaster because you could hear the bar. It also sounds like it's a single coil pickup. So it has a slightly different tone than you would associate with Van Halen. But this reminds me a lot of, say, Women and Children First, the way Eddie was using the Echoplex that he's using here. You can hear that strong um, delayed sound that sounds like it's being printed that way. But yeah, th this really blew me away because I had never heard this before a couple of years ago, and it definitely has a strong Van Halen vibe to it. So then it becomes a question of who influenced who. But again, if... You're talking about Chris Holmes and George Lynch, who were there at the time, saying, yeah, Eddie grabbed a couple things from this guy, Terry Gilgore. I tend to believe them. So if you haven't checked this out, like I said, this band's called Ready Kilowatt. Song's called Liquid Lady. They had another song that was on the flip side of this 45 that's completely different. The guitar playing is completely different. But yeah, this is an interesting thing. You know, it's clear that Eddie, if he was influenced by this, took it 
way beyond and obviously had his own spin and his own thing that he did with these licks. But it's an interesting footnote to check this out if you haven't heard it already. So, hey, I'm going to play a couple of licks from the solo. I'm kind of improving this. So we're just using the amp in the room. It's not going to be pretty sounding. But this will just give you an idea of some of what's going on. This first lick is about 55 seconds into the song. It goes like this. Speed it up a little bit. Anyway, I just picked that out quick. But that definitely is something you would hear Ed play something similar to. I'm wondering... If you're Terry Kilgore, this maybe came from Richie Blackmore. It has kind of a Blackmore kind of vibe to it, but a uh, very cool lick. It has a neat kind of chromatic. You bend that lick a little flat, but yeah, that's that. Okay, this next lick is about a minute and three seconds in. This really sounds like Eddie as far as the attack. Um, this one really stuck out to me. It kind of goes like this. <laughs> Something like that. And the other thing that stood out to me is a lot of the ways using the whammy bar. Like I know other guys like Hendrix and Blackmore and Tommy Bullen do a lot of the same stuff, but there's a little bit of that. I'm just going to kind of wing it. So what do you think? Do you think Terry influenced Ed? Ed influenced Terry? Combination of both? Who knows? Let's talk about it in the comments section. If you haven't heard Terry Kilgore before, hopefully this introduced you to him. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. We're trying to push to get to a thousand subs as quickly as possible. So please help us get there so we can continue to make content like this. In the meantime, I'm Mike McGadden for Genix Guitar. I will see you in the next video.